Hey guys, welcome back to or welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Chine Alton and if you have, thank you so much for watching my videos and supporting me. It really does mean a lot to me. And we just hit 65 subscribers and over 5,000 views. I'm really proud of myself for that and thank you guys so much for subscribing and watching my videos. So I just can't believe that it's actually happening and people are actually interested in what I post so yeah so in today's video I will be discussing and explaining why I decided to start my True Crimes of Australia um, YouTube series that I'm starting um, I haven't posted any videos yet I'm still doing a lot of research and writing out the scripts and everything because I need scripts, there is so much information and I want to put in as much as I possibly can. And yeah, so I'm going into why I decided to do it, what my intentions are, and hopefully you guys like this video. Um, I just thought it'd be better to do it now before I start posting all those other videos that are part of this series so you kind of understand where I'm coming from and what I'm hoping to achieve by making this series. Anyways, I hope you guys like this video and let's get into it. So, as you guys may know, um, I turned 18 a couple weeks ago and I did have a birthday fundraiser for Thorn. And the fundraiser is still going, so if you would like to donate at all and help save children and people from sex trafficking and human trafficking, that would be amazing. The link to that fundraiser will be down below and the link to my video talking about Thorn will be down below as well. They are an amazing organisation and I stand with them. I love their work and they do inspire me and they are part of the reason why I decided to start doing this series. So a lot of people who know me in person know that I love true crimes. I am very interested in it and my stem for my grandfather being a cop but I do love mysteries. I do love true crimes and all that stuff. So the reason I decided to start this series is because I wanted to teach and educate myself more about these cases but I also wanted to educate more people about them and hopefully we all learn something from these past cases and hopefully they never happen again because a lot of them are very sad, they're very heartbreaking and hopefully we learn from these, hopefully we pick up signs sooner and we are able to save more people. So there will be different things that I am covering within this series. I will be covering famous, well, famous and not really famous missing person cases in Australia, active and non-active, people that are now legally presumed dead and ones that are newer. The reason why I'm starting to, to talk about missing person cases is because so many of them frustrate me to no end because these cases could have been solved a long time ago but as I was researching more into certain cases it is very prevalent and obvious that the police quite often in any country across the world will label a lot of missing person cases as runaways instead of actually missing persons people until years later and then they go oh maybe it's not a runaway we'll look at the other possibilities now and the very important thing that i want to get across in this series is the first 23 24 and 48 72 hours after someone goes missing is crucial in a lot of cases the killer will kill the person and dispose of the body within the first three hours. In the first 24 hours they are able to get victims of sex trafficking and human trafficking out of the country. And I think it's more important that we talk about these cases more. And what the only things I feel that I can do and that a lot of people can do is to keep talking about these missing person cases. To keep their names and faces out there. All it takes is someone seeing a photo or hearing their name and going, oh, I think I know something. And if you know anything about any of these cases that I do talk about, please contact either your local police station or Crime Stoppers because any tips can give the family and their 
husband of the victim closure or the pers the person that they want back. So that is what I'm hoping to do, that I keep their stories alive, that I keep their names and faces out there. And the other reason why I want to talk about some of these missing person cases is because all it really takes is more public interest ignited in the case and more pressure from the public on to the police to solve the case. To hopefully have the pressure make them put more resources into solving these cases and getting closure. So that is my intention of talking about missing person cases. There are going to be a lot including um, William Tool, which is a case that I'm reading about right now and it is very sad and my, my heart goes out to the family. It must be so hard. And fin there's been more, been more information come out in later years now that we know that William was a foster child. So that is good. We know some more about that and why the foster parents and the biological parents were ruled out as suspects. And the other things I'm going to be talking about, obviously, are serial killers and murder cases. Um, there have been... I thought Australia only had two major serial killers, which, as we obviously know, the backpacker murders, famous Ivan Malat. Thank you for ruining so many people's lives, you piece of shit. Sorry. Cause the case frustrates me, and so... And it is very freaky when you find out how he murdered his victims, so keep your eye out for that video. And we had the night caller over in Perth. I didn't realise that there was actually way more than that. So I was like, oh, if I didn't know about this, I wonder how many other people didn't know. So I want to educate people on that as well. And a lot of murder cases, not serial killer cases, but a lot of murder cases in general sometimes will go unsolved or the case goes cold. And like with missing person cases, all it takes is keeping their name, story and face out there and hopefully more resources will be put towards solving those cases. Hopefully someone comes forward with information and either the family can be reunited for missing persons or closure can be given to the families and friends. I will also be using this series to promote certain books other YouTube channels and videos, audio books and podcasts and many more, even TV specials um, where I got my information from. With a lot of these cases you have to read through a lot of books, you have to read through a lot of stuff on the internet and listen to a lot of podcasts and find out for yourself and learn all that. So in any of these series, well these videos in these series, I will be um, talking about what I read, what I watched, what I listened to and how I found my information and crediting them. I will also have links to all their stuff in the description that way you can find the sources for yourself and check them out if you would like. Um, I'm hoping that by this series I can help promote other people's work and um, help bring us all together and help get these things sorted and solved. And with that, promoting other people, promoting their channel, promoting their work that have helped a lot is a great way to do that. You're helping other people, you're helping their dream, you're also helping get information out there. And that's just what I want to do. I want to find these people, I want to get these cases solved. I also want to help other people with their dreams and their works. So I will be promoting books and other things as well and I might be promoting some stuff on Audible as well when I do get my membership. Plenty on doing that thing. Now with this I will in all of my videos include as much detail as I can on the cases down to the very um, blood curling and nitty gritty disgusting disturbing heartbreaking details and in a lot of these cases the it does as much information as I can find on how the victims were found, I will be including that. I will, however, not be including photos or footages of a deceased person. I think it is very inappropriate to show a person's body. I will show pictures of them alive, but I will not show their dead body. I think that's wildly inappropriate. I think it's so rude 
to disrespect them like that, disrespect their families like that. So I will not be doing that. The reason why I want to focus a lot on the murder cases that have gone unsolved or cold is because a lot of the culprits are still out there living their best lives and they need they need to be brought to justice. The people that suffered at the culprit's hands need justice served and hopefully they get their time eventually and the truth will always find its way out about certain things. That's how Ivan Malat was found and how the Golden State Killer was found because DNA and the truth and rumours come out and some of them, a lot of them happen to be true. Not all rumours are true but quite a lot of them have fragments of the truth in them. And in this series I will be talking about Thorn quite a lot. As I mentioned I do have a birthday fundraiser for Thorn and the reason why I will be talking about them which is in the video linked down below about Thorn is because sadly a lot of missing person cases do end in sex trafficking and human trafficking and what Thorn does is create new technology and innovative technology to help fight back against child sex trafficking and the sexual exploitation of children. I believe in their mission, I think it's great and they teach a lot about stuff like sex torsion which again there's more detail about that in my other video so that's why I will be supporting them because their work is amazing they have helped save so many children and reunite so many families so in a lot of missing person cases especially when the person who has gone missing was Younger, I will be talking about Thorn because it is something that uh, I'm pretty sure even in Australia we use Thorn technology to help find people. Their technology is used in like 38, 48 different countries around the world to help identify victims quicker and get them reunited with their families sooner. So anyways, that is all for today's video. I know that was a lot of information and it might not be what you're expecting. But I thought that I would get this video out before the rest of the videos in this series go up. Because I think it's very important that people know my intention behind it. I'm not intending to get famous or viral off these videos. I'm intending to help spread awareness about certain situations, about certain people, and help hopefully get more public interest united in these cases and help get them solved. My intention is to help the victims and their families and their friends and help closure be served and justice be served where I can. Anyways, that is all for today's video. I love you guys and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!